As you guys can see, we are about to play God of War PS2 game on our Android device. Let's get started. Yo, what's up guys, it's Aprix here. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to set up and run the best PS2 emulator for Android devices in 2025. I'll be showing you guys the best settings, gameplay performance, low-end device settings. But before getting started, here are the minimum requirements. If you want to emulate PS2 games on Android, then you'll need to at least have 4 GB of RAM, Snapdragon 450 processor or above, Android version 8 or above. If you meet these minimum requirements, then you will also be able to try some PS2 games on your Android device. With that being said, hit that like button, subscribe, turn on all notification as I upload similar videos. Let's get started. Alright guys, to get started, we'll be using a brand new PS2 emulator for Android devices which is directly available on Play Store. Previously, if you guys remember, then the Aether SX2 emulator was actually the best PS2 emulator until the developer decided to stop its project and take it down from Play Store. But finally, we have some alternatives to that emulator which perform as good or even better than the Aether SX2 emulator. So when you open the Play Store, you'll need to search for PPSSPP2 which is a PS2 emulator for Android devices. And as you'll be able to see, it is very compact app. We'll just go ahead and add this on our Android device. I'll be showing you guys the setup best settings gameplay later on in this video. So watch the video till the end. So when you add this app on your Android device, just go ahead and launch it. Afterwards, you will see an UI similar to this. Now when you open the first option, it will ask you to add the ARM64 PPSS2 plugin so that we can emulate PS2 games on Android. So simply tap on it and it will open Google Play Store once again. And here we'll be able to directly add the PPSS2 ARM64 plugins on our Android device. Once it has been added, make sure to turn on your internet connection and you don't need to launch the PPSS to ARM64 plugins you will simply need to go back afterwards tap on the first option and select the game that you want to try out inside this emulator we will simply tap on the first option and launch the game that we want to try out on our android device and make sure to turn off your internet connection if you don't want to get any ads basically this emulator is an fork version of the normal Aether SX2 emulator with some more optimization and new features unfortunately as you guys know Aether SX2 was taken down so this is current the best alternative for it and unfortunately it has ads so you will need to turn off your internet connection to fix that issue anyways once you swipe back you will be able to see some of the features of this emulator like save game state load game state enable frame limiter along with that software renderer etc but let me show you guys what you need to do simply tap on this settings icon afterwards make sure that the fast boot option is enabled afterwards scroll down until you find this option where we'll need to enable show vps show speed show resolution and cpu usage options this will give us a better idea idea of how well is our game actually running. Afterwards, we'll go to system where here are the most important settings. If you are using an low-end Android device, you can enable underclocking. Set the underclocking to 130% if you want better performance. And you can also set the EE cycle mild underclock. But fortunately, you don't really need to do this un unless you have a really very low-end Android device with let's say like 4 GB RAM. If you have good Android device, then you can skip this part. Once that has been done, scroll down until you find the enable frame limit option. Make sure to turn off this option option if you want to get the best amount of performance possible while emulating your PS2 games. Or if you want to get a specific amount of performance then you can also increase the normal speed amount by doing so but in general I recommend you guys to turn this off. Afterwards in terms of graphics this is again a very important setting make sure to choose the Vulkan GPU renderer for best performance possible but this will only work if your device has Android version 10 or above. So Android 10 or below you will need to strictly use OpenGL or else you won't get any graphical output. Once that has been done in terms of multiplier make sure to set it to 1x if you have a low end Android device but if you have a really high end flagship android device you can go all the way up to 6x upscale multiplier which i think is 2k or 4k resolution but that's not necessary for today's video we'll go with 2x upscale furthermore we get options like texture filtering which you don't really need to change you can set everything as default make sure to disable anisotropic filtering for better performance and in terms of game display make sure to choose the aspect ratio as stretch enable widescreen patches afterwards scroll down and make sure to enable fxa shader if you want better graphics quality but this can definitely decrease the performance of your game so if you want better performance then you can disable this option once that has been done in terms of advanced settings make sure to keep everything as default so you don't really face any game crashing issues etc these are some experimental settings for example software rendering threads if you are using software renderer you can go up to six threads to get the best performance but i would recommend you guys to keep it as default because it can cause some issues while emulating specific games on your android device once that has been done in terms of audio output if you want to decrease the 
see output volume you can do that and other options are memory cards game list bios as well as advanced settings now in terms of advanced settings you can enable double e recompiler and all of the following settings for better performance once that has been done we'll simply go back Afterwards you will be able to see now our game has opened in a stretch format as well as it is looking pretty good now. At the top right corner we also get an FPS bar which is showing us how much performance are we getting while running this game. But we are not just done yet. If you don't like the on screen touch controls which have been provided you can tap on this uh, controller layout which is right here or the logo of the emulator. Then it will take you to the on screen touch control settings. For example you will be able to enable dual analog pad. Depending on the game which you are playing this is very useful you can also move buttons adjust the size of the buttons as well as opacity enable touch gliding which will allow you to press multiple controller face buttons you can also use your device accelerometer to simulate a pad as well as enable vibrate on press which will provide you a great haptic feedback as well as enable game vibration once that has been done now we have finished setting up the ppss2 emulator on our android device the next step will be to simply tap on start new game and here we go our game should successfully start now in ppss2 emulator you get two options Options. So basically there is an button in the center which lets you toggle between the joystick as well as d-pad But now that we have enabled a different setting We are getting both joystick as well as d-pad at the same time along with that another analog stick Nonetheless as you will be able to see our god of war ps2 game has successfully started on our android device And we are getting about 80 to 90 fps as you will be able to see at the top left corner And the game is running absolutely smoothly We are emulating this game at 2x graphics resolution and my device is iQOO 12 with snapdragon 8 gen 3 processor so yeah it definitely works properly without any issues and this is the only other alternative ps2 emulator for android devices in 2024 or 2025 do let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think about playing ps2 games on your android devices in 2025 anyways i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching goodbye